genetic inheritance and genetic control. In 3.1, we are going to look into protein synthesis which consists of two important stages, transcription and translation. 1.3.1, transcription in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. 1.3.2, steps in translation which is initiation, elongation and termination. RNA is a nucleic acid like DNA but with some differences. RNA has the sugar ribose instead of deoxyribose and RNA has the base uracil instead of thymine. RNA is also usually a single strand polynucleotide which is shorter than the DNA. There are three types of RNA. mRNA carries genetic code from DNA to ribosomes where translation process occurs to make protein. rRNA is a component of ribosome since ribosomes are made of rRNA and proteins. tRNA is an RNA that folds up due to complementary base pairing into a three-leaf clover shape and it brings amino acids to the ribosome. Transcription is the first stage in protein synthesis. It is the synthesis of RNA using DNA as a template. The information from DNA is transcribed or copied into RNA molecule. Transcription produces messenger mRNA that is complementary to the DNA template. Transcription leads to translation the second stage and translation is the synthesis of polypeptide using information in the mRNA. In prokaryotic cells, there is no membrane-bound organelles and because of that, both transcription and translation occur in the cytoplasm because this is where the DNA is as well as the ribosome. DNA of eukaryotic cells are located within their nucleus. Therefore, transcription or the synthesis of mRNA occurs in the nucleus producing a primary transcript known as pre-mRNA. This pre-mRNA requires additional step which is RNA processing. Finally, the functional mRNA can leave the nucleus through the nuclear pore into the cytoplasm to where ribosomes are for the translation or synthesis of polypeptide to occur. Always remember that the DNA molecule is a double helix. When the gene within DNA is copied, only one strand of mRNA is produced. The DNA strand that is copied is known as the template strand, while the other strand that is not copied is called the non-template strand. The basis of the mRNA produced is read in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction as codons. Codons is a sequence of base triplets. Each codon specifies an amino acid to be added onto the growing polypeptide. The sequence of bases in mRNA that codes for amino acid is shown in the table. There are 20 amino acids and only 4 base nucleotides. Since the bases are read as base triplets or codons, there are 64 triplet combinations possible. However, only 61 codons correspond to 20 amino acids because the stop codons UAA UAG and UGA does not code for any amino acid. The start codon, AUG, always codes for amino acid methionine. If you would like to find the amino acid for a codon, GCU, then you would read the table by looking at the first mRNA base for G, which is somewhere here and then you would read the table by finding the second mRNA base which is C now that would be only here 
and then finally the third mRNA base which corresponds to GCU. So here GCU is alanine. Some feature of the genetic code is that there is only one start codon, which is AUG that goes for methionine. There are three stop codons, which is UAA, UAG, and UGA, which does not code for any amino acid. The genetic code is linear, that means the codons of the mRNA is read in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. And then it is not overlapping, then each base triplet is read only once. It is unambiguous. There, the code has only one meaning. It is redundant. Some amino acids are specified by more than one codons. And that it is universal. The same genetic code applies to all species of organisms. Transcription can be divided into three stages, being initiation, elongation, and termination. During initiation, RNA polymerase binds to a promoter, causing the DNA helix to unwind and transcription to start. During elongation, the RNA polymerase moves downstream, unwinding the DNA, and the RNA is continuously transcribed and elongating in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Once the RNA polymerase has passed, the DNA strands reforms a double helix. Eventually, during termination, the RNA transcript is released and the RNA polymerase detaches from the DNA template. This diagram shows the initiation of transcription in a eukaryote. Promoter of a eukaryote includes a tata box which contains about 25 nucleotides. Promoter is the DNA sequence where RNA polymerase attaches to and initiates transcription. The promoter of a gene determines where transcription starts and the strand that act as a template strand. Now, several transcription factors binds to the DNA. This is followed by RNA polymerase 2 binding to the promoter. Additional transcription factors also bind to the DNA along with the RNA polymerase and this forms the transcription initiation complex. RNA polymerase 2 then unwinds the DNA double helix. RNA synthesis begins at the transcription start point on the template strand with free RNA nucleotides added in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Note that RNA polymerase 2 is used to synthesize pre-mRNA in eukaryotic cells, whereas bacteria have a single type of RNA polymerase that synthesizes mRNA and other types of RNA. During elongation of the RNA strand, RNA polymerase continues to unwind and separate the DNA double helix apart. It also adds RNA nucleotides by complementary base pairing to the 3' prime end of the growing RNA polymer and join these nucleotides by strong covalent bonds. <coughs> As the RNA polymerase moves along, the DNA double helix reforms and the new RNA molecules peel away from its DNA template. Termination of transcription differs in bacteria and eukaryotes. In bacteria, RNA polymerase transcribe a terminator sequence on the DNA. The transcribed terminator sequence in the mRNA signals the end of the transcription. RNA polymerase detaches from the DNA and the released mRNA can be translated without further modification. In eukaryotes, 
RNA polymerase 2 transcribe the polyadenylation signal sequence on the DNA. This produces a polyadenylation signal in the pre-mRNA. The pre-mRNA transcribed is then released. 10 to 35 nucleotides pass this polyadenylation sequence. In eukaryotes, the pre-mRNA produced in transcription must undergo RNA processing which occurs in the nucleus. In RNA processing or modification, there is alteration of the pre-mRNA ends. In this process, a 5' cap is added to the 5' end and a poly A tail is added to the 3' end. RNA modification also involves RNA splicing. In RNA splicing, the non-coding sequence or introns are removed and the coding sequence, which are exons, are joined together. In RNA processing, alteration to the pre-mRNA ends functions to facilitate the export of mRNA to the cytoplasm, protect the mRNA from hydrolytic enzyme, as well as help ribosomes attached to the 5' end of mRNA. Following RNA processing, this results a mature mRNA that is shorter and contains only exons or a continuous coding sequence. tRNA is a single RNA strand of about 80 nucleotides long. They are transcribed from DNA templates in the nucleus. tRNA functions to bring amino acids to the ribosome. tRNA has two ends, an amino acid attachment end and the other is an anticodon end. tRNA can be used repeatedly and there are 64 different tRNA molecules each with a different anticodon that is complementary to 64 different mRNA codons. An amino acid attachment site with CCA base sequence on the 3' end allows each tRNA to carry a specific amino acid to ribosome. Anticodons are written in 3' to 5' direction because they complementary base pair with mRNA codons which are read in the 5' to 3' direction. Attachment of tRNA to its amino acid is catalyzed by an enzyme known as aminoacyl tRNA synthetase. Appropriate amino acid and its tRNA enters the active site of a specific synthetase. Using ATP, the synthetase catalyzes a covalent bonding of the amino acid to its specific tRNA tRNA and its charged amino acid or aminoacyl tRNA is released by the synthetase. In this example, since the amino acid shown is tyrosine, then the enzyme is tyrosyl tRNA synthetase. Most cells contain thousands of ribosomes. Each ribosome consists of two subunits, which is the large subunit and the small subunit. Ribosomes in prokaryotic cells are smaller than the ones in eukaryotic cells, and there are three binding sites for tRNA on a ribosome, which is the A site, the P site, and the E site. The A site, or aminoacyl tRNA site, holds the tRNA carrying amino acid to be added to the chain. The P site or peptidyl tRNA site holds the tRNA carrying the growing polypeptide chain. The E site or exit site discharges tRNA leaving the ribosome. Translation is the synthesis of a polypeptide chain. Three stages of translation are initiation, elongation, and termination.
In the initiation stage, mRNA and an initiator tRNA are brought together by the small ribosomal subunit. mRNA attaches to the small ribosomal subunit at the mRNA binding site. Anticodon of the initiator tRNA complementary base pairs with the start codon of mRNA. Initiator tRNA carries amino acid methionine. The large ribosomal subunit attaches onto the small ribosomal subunit forming a translation initiation complex using energy from GTP. The initiator tRNA occupies the P site. The vacant A site is now ready for the next amino acid tRNA. During the elongation stage, amino acids are added one by one to the preceding amino acids at C terminus of the growing chain. This involves a three-step cycle. The first step is codon recognition. Hydrogen bond forms between codons of mRNA in the E site and the anticodon of an, of an incoming amino acid tRNA. This tRNA enters the A site. In the second step, peptide bond formation. A peptide bond is formed between amino acid of polypeptide at the P site and the new amino acid in the A site. This is catalyzed by enzyme peptidyl transferase. The polypeptide separates from the tRNA in the P site and binds to the amino acid of the tRNA in the A site. The third step is translocation. The tRNA with its attached polypeptide in the A site is translocated to the P site and taking the mRNA along with it. This brings the next codon to be translated into the A site. The previous tRNA that was in the P site is moved to the E site and soon released from the ribosome. Translation proceeds along the mRNA in a 5' to 3' direction. The last stage of translation is termination. Elongation continues until a stop codon in the mRNA reaches the A site. Stop codon is UAA, UAG and UGA. The stop codons are termination signals and does not code for any amino acid. A release factor binds directly to the stop codon in the A site. This hydrolyzes the bond between the tRNA in the P site and the last amino acid of the completed polypeptide chain. The polypeptide chain is released and the translation initiation complex dissociates. In bacteria and eukaryotes, an mRNA can be translated by many ribosomes simultaneously. This allows many protein molecules to be made from one mRNA molecule. A group of ribosomes all attached to one mRNA is called polyribosome. This diagram shows an overview of all the components involved in protein synthesis. 